What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Living the Life Show. I'm your host, Columbus Cody. I'm so glad you chose to join me for the verse of the day. Now, today's verse of the day is comes from my favorite book, the book of Proverbs, and I pray that it blesses you because it definitely will challenge you, one, to receive it, two, to be a giver of it. Okay, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5, and it says this, open rebuke is better than secret love. Open rebuke is better than secret love. And what this verse is saying is that it's better to be openly corrected, to be openly chastised than for me to sit back because I care. I don't want to offend. I don't want to hurt feelings. So I don't say anything. It's better for you to be open and tell me I'm wrong than to allow me to keep going down the wrong path. Now, as believers, we have to be careful with this because a lot of times we get a little too high and mighty and in our correction, we forget that we once did the same thing. In our correction, we forget that we do fall and stumble too. We speak as in a tone, in a way that sometimes comes across as self-righteous or judgmental. Now, we still need to help correct. We still need to openly rebuke. Rebuking is not a bad thing. The, the sound of the word rebuke makes it sound harsh but it's correction it's it's what we do for our children if we care about them we don't let them just stay on a bad path we correct them we rebuke them we we chastise them the bible tells us the lord chastens those he loves he chastises those he loves because he loves us he corrects us and i'll never forget years ago i was in walmart and this little girl was walking past me. She was staring at me as she was walking around the corner to the next aisle. And she did not look away. She just kept staring at me. And I've been a teacher for nearly 20 years. And so when I see a child that's doing wrong, my natural instinct is to help coach that kid out of the wrong, to help lift that kid away from the bad choice they're making. I see her coming around the corner and she's not looking where she's going. And there's a cart coming the other way. And I say, sweetie, watch out, watch out. And she looks me dead in the eyes and she says, you don't tell me what to do. And all I kept thinking was, wow, she's this young and she refuses to accept correction. She's this young and she and to her to be corrected, to be rebuked is something she didn't want to hear. And I thought about us as adults. We're the same way. We never want to be told we're wrong. We never want to be told there's a better way to do what we're doing. But Later in life, we wish someone would have told us. It's very important that as believers, we're very thoughtful with how we approach people. We're very thoughtful of how we say a thing or speak a thing into a person's life. Because one, we don't want to let them continue to go down the wrong path, but we don't want them to feel like all I'm doing is pointing out your error. Because the reason I correct the reason I would chastise, the reason I would rebuke is not to pull you down, but to lift you up. It's all to help you become the greater man, the greater woman that God wants you to be. I would never bring focus to your flaws, except I'm trying to help you become more flawless. Something to think about. Why am I even trying to chastise or chasten or rebuke? It's not because I don't like you. It's because I love you. It's because I don't want to see you go down the wrong path. I saw a video uh, by Penn and Teller, the magicians, and he's an atheist or it, it, he alluded to it on the on his on his podcast or this video. And he says that if you are a believer even though I say I'm an atheist, if you're a true believer, you still need to share your faith. This is what he's saying now. This is not a spiritual person saying this. This is what a man that's saying that even if I say I don't believe, if you truly do believe, you still need to share that with me. You still need to show me the error of my way. Because again, you understand the eternal consequence of me not changing. And if you truly believe that and you don't speak to me concerning that, then where is the love in your heart? I like to think of it this way. If a house is burning and it's on fire, would you just let people rush by you and go into the burning house? No. Now, you can't force them to stay out, but you can at least warn them that that house is burning. Please avoid that house. You can't fight them and hold them and grab them and don't let them go. They, they still have to make that choice. But if you care, if you love at all, you would at least say, 
please stay away from that house. And some of them are going to look at you and say, you don't tell me what to do. But there'll be others that will say, thank you so much for warning me. Thank you so much for rebuking and chastising and training and scolding and, and, and holding me accountable. Because that's what our ultimate goal is as believers, is to hold each other accountable. Not to judge, not to put down because you fail, not to kick you while you're down, just to hold each other accountable. And if you love me and you see me fall, you see me failing, please speak to me on that. And I pray that God will give me a spirit of meekness that I will receive your rebuke and I will make the changes and be on the better path. And that is your verse of the day. God bless you guys. I'm so glad you hung out with me today. I pray that you will share this video with someone you love. I pray that if you have a desire to be a blessing to the, the YouTube channel or the podcast, that you'll click on one of the links below in the description. Make a donation of your choice, you know, $1, a million dollars, whatever you want to do. I will use those funds to be a blessing to uh, many, many others as the shows continue to go out. So I can't do it without you. I need your help. We can do it together. All right. It's time. Watch it. Share it. Live it. God bless you guys. Let's get busy living the life.